Hey guys, welcome to the next video that I wanted to do. Just finished taking a starlet for a for its first test drive. Just finished doing a diff swap and coilover swap on the back of it. So uh, yeah, I thought I'd document the whole the whole lot. Plenty of hours went into it. So um, yeah, sit down, <laughs> get comfy. It's a long video, so yeah, hope you enjoy it. Now that I've pulled the diff from the car and got my donor diff, I can sort of compare them and show you. The, uh, the top diff there is the Toyota E-Series diff which came out of the Starlet. So that's not the original diff. Um, that came out of, uh, I think they come out of Light Aces and a few other sort of light commercial Toyotas. Um, quite a big diff compared to the factory diff but the reason I'm not that happy with this stuff is <clears throat> it had to be shortened obviously to fit in um, Starlet's been quite narrow cars um, so this has got a broken axle and the axles that were shortened for it were done pretty poorly so I've broken a few and I'm not really happy with it and also because I want the Starlet to be a road car eventually once I tidy it up I'd like to put an LSD in it and there is no LSD option for those E-series diffs. So the, well for me anyway, the best option is this Toyota F-series diff, which is the same diff I've put in my 626, which I'm sure a lot of you are watching the, those videos. Obviously hugely, hugely wider. Um, although I think this E-series, I haven't actually measured it compared to a factory Starlet diff, but I'm pretty sure it's a little narrower um, than the factory diff was, but anyway, so this F-series needs to be shortened heaps, maybe 150 a side or something like that, yeah, way wider, um, but the reason I've chosen this stuff is because I can use an Alteza LSD for it, or an aftermarket Alteza LSD, so that's mainly the reason really, could go up to the next size which is a Hilux, but Although plenty of people use them, I think it's a little bit overkill. And sort of, you've run hunts for Hiluxes, so Hilux stuff, so I think this F series is the is the way. <clears throat> Drum braked, obviously. Uh, there is disc brake options for these F series diffs. Oh, this, if I didn't say this, diff is out of a steamer, or a, I think Privia a steamer, sort of along those lines. Um, they do come disc brake option, but the disc brakes are too big for 13s, which 13 inch wheels, which I run on the car. So these drums, like in my 626, um, they fit just fit under. So and to be honest, I'm actually quite a fan of drum brakes on the rear. Once they're when they're when they're in good good nick and adjusted properly, they work work perfectly well. So yeah, I'm happy as to use it. <coughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strip it down. Pull the diff head brakes and axles out of it, pull the brake lines off. I'll have to cut all the, all the mounts off the diff. Um, and the first step will be to shorten it, well, shorten the casing. Um, I'll have a measure up of the, the E series, find some measurements of the original Starlet diff, <coughs> um, and decide on what width I'm going to go with. A little narrower than this, the factory diff. In this case, it'll probably be quite good. The wheels I've got are quite wide for it, so 
and if I want to run smaller wheels I can always put a spacer on <coughs> um, yeah so shorten it down make some mounts for it to fit up in the car get some axles shortened fit the LTZ LSD that I've got for it and then once that's all done we'll be putting it up in there and I'm actually converting the rear of this to coilover suspension rather than the separate spring and shock combo so yeah once that's up there there'll be a bit to do making turrets and brace them to the floor and let's sort of carry on and knowing me <laughs> more than likely do some cutting to make it lower <laughs> well, I'll see when we get there First hurdle I've struck is struggling to get this axle out. Um, it's pretty common for the actually be quite stuck in there, but um, the other side came out so easily. I was expecting this side too as well, but obviously not. Um, so anyway, just got my slide hammer out and just made up that little rig there to screw the slide hammer to and pop it out. Then I can carry on pulling the diffie out and pulling all the brakes in there off. Over so much time if I if I think too hard, I might lose my mind. Oh, oh my, my next, next girl. girl. Yeah. Will be nothing like my ex girl. I made mistakes back then. I'll never do it again. With my next girl. She be nothing like my ex girl. There was a painful dance. I've just finished stripping the F series diff. This here is the the E series that came out. Um, it's a bit late at night, so I'm not gonna not gonna get stuck into cutting all the the mounts off the the F series. But I thought I'd have a look at this diff and have a look up under the car and just sort of work out what I'm gonna do for um for the mounts. Um, obviously it's a four link in the back of these starlets. If you don't know starlets, um, they're a triangulated four link, so these top mounts here, um, well, they're, they're quite close to the diff head and they triangulate outwards into the body um, and that essentially gives it the stiffness it needs and so these cars don't run a pan hard rod. Um, <clears throat> so I've got to obviously um, replicate these mounts on the, on the new diff but um, now that I'm starting afresh I want to make the changes that I need to to get this working a bit better. So obviously, like my other cars you've probably seen, and if you've seen this car when it had the wheels on it, it's um, reasonably low, and that's how I want to keep it. So I'm going to try and make, we'll do the best I can to make the new diff work. So what I'm going to have to do is um, this bottom mount here is going to, like I did in, in my 626, bring that down a lot more, down towards the ground. Um, just to try and bring the arms back to a more factory level and um, get the instant centre right. There's a fair bit that goes into getting geometry right, but to be honest, it's beyond. I've sort of done a fair bit of research of my own, but it's a bit beyond trying to explain it all in this video. So, um, yeah, so remake that mount um, lower. Um, I've just realised by measuring this stuff and in the car that the bottom arms as well as the top arms are actually not parallel so um, the bottom arms are wider at the diff end than they are at the car end by about 50 mil aside roughly so I can't just make that low amount there um, I can't just make it parallel it's actually got to, got to be on that angle so so is that to take into consideration um, and with these top mounts 
there's really not much room for them to come lower down. Um, I'm going to try and get the most out of it that I can, and I may even notch the notch the diff housing there. Um, just where the arm comes out of here, they get really close to there, so I may even notch that out a bit, just to try and give it some clearance. Um, <coughs> just go over here to <coughs> these are the uh, these are the the lower arms that come out of it. Um, these are still bog standard. The uh, factory bushes in them. The top arms, if I can show you, probably not. Might be a bit too dark up here. Yeah, way too dark. Um, I replaced those with nolophane, um, the bushes on them. And I'm contemplating now whether I spend a bit of money and put some rose joints in it. Um, it's not really something I normally want to do on a road car. But I might do it just for the fact that, well, actually, no, I don't know. I'll, <laughs> I'll price some up because, um, yeah, I don't really want to spend too much money. And, I mean, they've worked fine in Starlets for 30-odd for years. Well, yeah, 40 years, I suppose, nearly. Um, but, yeah, it would, it would definitely benefit it handling-wise. But um, not that I've actually ever been in a car, I don't think, with rose jointed rear. But I don't want it to become too harsh. Not that that's the smoothest riding thing, it's as low as it is, but anyway, the um, the cost of them will probably be the determining factor really, whether I want to spend the time and money to make some rose jointed arms. Um, as I've said earlier, I'm not going to be reusing those, or well, not reusing, but remaking anyway, those um, spring mounts, because it's going to get, get coilovers in the back of it. Um, if I flip this over a bit... Oh, if I can do it with one hand, you'll see there the um, that's the original shock mount. So I'll make something like that, but a lot beefier to take the whole way to the, the whole way to the rear. Um, those really aren't suited to put a coilover on. They're fine for a shock, but not for a coilover. So it'll be something that looks similar, but a lot stronger. Um, and quite likely I'll double shear it, which. I'll explain that more when we get to it.
got the diff housing with all the mounts cut off it, ready to ready to shorten it up. Still haven't worked out um, the amount I'm going to shorten it by, but um, I'll get there. Just going to do some measuring soon. Um, so what I've done is I've spun up these these four spaces here, um, 80 mil outer diameter, which is the outer diameter of the bearings at either end and the bearings in the diff head. So what I'll do is these will take place of those four bearings and then I can slip an inch shaft, which I just happen to have lying around, That's that holds an inch obviously, um, and then it will slip right through the whole length of this and hold it all nice and true so that when I cut it and remove the right amount and put it back together, um, it will all be held true to weld back together. Now, sort of had to think about where to cut it and where to shorten it, and I sort of figured there's two options. There's either doing it there, where the um, the bearing boss is welded on the end, or right here is another another sort of seam. Um, now, you'd sort of think maybe that'd be the best place where there's a weld to just cut the weld out, shorten it up. Um, obviously, there's this step in the tube there, so that makes it kind of impossible to do it there, but also the the better thing I think about shortening it at this end here is you're far less likely to get any distortion um, with the diff casing by welding it there. Um, by if I cut, cut the end off and just weld the end on, you, by that being a small amount out, it would really put the axle on a on a on the wrong angle to be to be meeting in with the with the diff head. So I think doing it. At that point there is the the best way to get it nice and true obviously once these bushes and the shaft goes through it'll hold it pretty blooming and good but there's always room for a bit of stretch and whatnot but um yeah so as long as the axles slip through and then straight into the diff head and the wheels are pointing straight forward and camber's pretty good then i'll be <clears throat> so i've pulled the inside out all the crown wheel out of the diff head here so I said these spaces will slip into that spot there and keep it all in line. I just wanted to try and explain a bit better about getting this casing right or <clears throat> how you can get it wrong and what sort of effect it will have. Um, <clears throat> now what I was saying about the difference between cutting it here and, and up there, um, the way I sort of see it is if I cut the end off here, shorten it up and weld it back on, if you imagine this piece of steel as the axle, if I shorten that up and get it get it out of line ever so slightly, um, which is probably not actually possible really with the system I'm going to use, but if you didn't have any system, if you just tried to line it up and you welded this on crooked, what you'll find is the axle would want to be pointing out here or out there or up or down if you got that crooked. So if you had that and you welded it up and then you went to slide the axle in, you'd, you'd have real trouble trying to get the end to engage into the diff head whereas if you cut it up at, at this end here and you didn't have a, root, a jig to hold it nice and straight and you weld it you're more likely to get this end here to be out of line which is probably less of an issue because you're still then going to be able to likely get that into the diff head um, now people do especially in race cars with live axles um, tweak the diff housings or diff casings a bit to try and either get a bit of, bit of toe in or toe out, whichever way you want it, or a bit of camber. Um, adding a little bit of camber is, is, I wouldn't say common, but it is things that people do in race cars stuff. Um, but you do put a lot of load on bearings and on the splines that engage into the diff head. So for what I want to do, I really just want this to be nice and straight. Um, a little touch of toe in would probably be right, and a, maybe a touch of negative camber wouldn't hurt either, but... Um, for now, just to get this shortened, I'll just concentrate on getting it, getting it dead straight, so that these axles are straight into the diff head, and the wheels pointing right. I'm just getting the diff ready to cut it up. Um, I don't know if you can see it. I've just scribed those lines there um, on the, on either side, and that's just going to be so when I do cut them off and put them back on, that I get um, the orientation of that right and either direction um, it's not really critical to be honest um, it only really aligns the, 
the brakes well it just doesn't actually line anything really but um, I'm just going to put it back to where it is <clears throat> since it's easy to do and so I've measured this and well I measured it before I pulled it apart and I measured the diff that came out of it the E series out of the start and this stuff measured 1550 wide overall and the E series that came out measured 1330 uh, I'm having a hard time working out what the original starlet diff would have been but um, I'm pretty certain they were wider than 1330 so I'm going to narrow this to the same as the E series was um, yeah the, the wheels I have for it are pretty wide and they do stick out a bit but I'm going to be making some new rear guards anyway so um, I did think about narrowing this even more again um, but when I drift the starlet and put slightly narrow wheels on it, it ends up end up being a bit too far in so I'll just narrow this to what the diff that came out of it was and should be all good so <clears throat> I'm just gonna um, with the fiber grinder cut um, right next to that um, I actually don't know what it is really that seam there might be these might be friction welded together maybe from the factory I'm gonna cut there and then 110 mil along here cut through both sides and that'll give me my 220 total width and that it needs to be shorter Biggie uh uh-huh uh this goes out to Biggie. you this goes out to you and you and you Biggie. And you this goes out to you this goes out to you this goes out to you and you and you uh your reign on the top was short like leprechauns as I crush so-called willies, thugs, and rapper dons. Uh, get in that ass, quick, fast like Ramadan. It's that rap phenomenon, Don Dada, fuck Papa. You gotta call me Francis M H White and take light toast. So iron was told in shootout, stay low and keep firing. Keep extra clips for extra shit. Who's next to flip on that cat with that grip on rap? The most shady, Tell Frankie baby. Ain't no telling where I may be. May see me in D C at Howard. So that's the diff casing shortened, um, all V'd out and ready to weld, and the bushes and shaft all through it. You see that these are hanging down, they sort of, you know, can go anywhere. Um, but with that shaft through and those bushes, it's holding, at least holding that end true to the centre and the other end. So as long as I get this, you know, pretty much spot on tack it up, tack that side, and then weld it, we'll be good to go. Homecoming with my man Capone dumb and fucking something You should know my steelo Went from 10 G's for blow to 30 G's a show To all G's with O's I've never seen before So, Jesus, get off the notorious Mean us before I squeeze and bust If the beef between us, we can settle it With the chrome and metal shit I make it hot like a kettle get You're delicate, you better get Who sent you? You still pedal shit I got more rise than great adventure Biggie, how are you gonna do it? Kicking the door, waving the 4-4 All you heard was Papa, don't hit me no more Kicking the door, waving the 4-4 All welded up Happy ears Shaft spins nice and free So that's a pretty good sign that It's pretty true Well, let's hope so But nah, stoked Now that the housing's all shortened It's time to make some mounts for it so what I've done is I've actually just drawn out this chalk pattern here which is um, pretty much the mounts for the lower arms. So like I said before, um, the mounts, or the lower arms, the mounting is actually closer together at the car end than it is at the defend. So that line, those, that line there, that one down the end, that's where the plane the arms would sit in just a center line for reference and then that distance there is the distance between the mounts on the body and then that there on the diff obviously so that gives me a bit of a guide to go off about the angle these mounts need to be on and so I've just made a couple of templates for the lower arm brackets um, they are essentially the same except the one on the left the hole is 10mm further forward just to account for 
that angle there that the, that the arm's on. Um, I've given it, I've lowered lowered the, um, the lower arm mount from the diff, so from the center of the axle tubes, the lower arm mount is, is 150mm down from there. Um, I'm not sure whether these are factory mounts, but on this E-series diff anyway, um, the mounts were 90mm down, so I've lowered the diff end of the lower arms 60mm more, just to try and get that instant centre back back better with the car being so low. Um, typically if you do a diff swap you'll quite often cut the mounts off the, off the diff that come out of the car but because I want to sell that diff or try sell that diff as it is um, I'm leaving it intact and just making things from scratch. Um, <clears throat> one part about these diff mounts that I've made I tried to keep the back the back side of it flat and square these will sit or up under the, the axle tube there but because I'm going to need a mount for the um, the lower mount of the coilover so effectively this well these here will go either side of that and that back face there will be where I can put a plate to mount the coilover a little hurdle I think I'm going to run into is um, the width of the diff and where the mounts need to go the um, the outside plate, which we go up against there, looks like it wants to sit up around here somewhere on this casting, whereas the inside one is fine, it's on the tube somewhere. Um, but I think I'm going to run into maybe cert issues with welding it there. I know a friend of mine, Richie, who's building a Starlet, um, he had to change it, I think they'd welded to there to start and had to change it, so I might have to get a bit fancy with that outer mount there to, to bring it inboard to weld off the um, off the tube. It does seem a bit silly that you're not allowed to weld there. I mean, that's a big fat weld, but I can understand their reasoning for not allowing it for cert stuff. So that might make it a bit tricky, but um, I'll at least make the, the inner plates and get it sitting, sort of sitting in place and tack it up and see what it looks like. All you heard was Papa don't hit me no more Kick in the door, wave in the 4-4 All you heard was Papa don't hit me no more Kick in the door, wave in the 4-4 uh -huh. All you heard was Papa don't hit me no more On your mark, get set, when I spark you wet Look how dark it get when you mark for death Should I start your breath or should I let you die? In fear you start to cry, ask why Lyrically I worship, don't front the word sick You cursed it, but rehearsed it I drop unexpected like bird shit, you herbs get stuck quickly for royalties and show money. Don't forget the publishing, I punish them. Uh -huh. I'm done uh -huh. with them, son. I'm surprised you run with them. I think they got coming them, cause they nothing but dicks. Trying to blow up like nitro and dynamite sticks. Mad, I smoke hydro, rock diamonds, that's sick. Got paid off my flow, rhyme with my own clip. Take trips to Cairo, lay in with your bitch. I know you got the um, trailing arm mounts all cut out and bent. As you can see, like I was saying, I had to bend that one just to clear that, that casting there. I'll just start, uh, well I've only tacked one, but so I'll tack those to the bench nice and square and true using those lower arms and that pattern I drawed out before. Um, yeah, I'll tack those all down, clean up the diff casing first where the weld's going to be, make sure I get the um, pinion angle correct, that angle there, get it, get it sitting width right, that way or that way obviously, make sure it's centred um, and then yeah weld those on. I'll, um, when it comes time to I'll take the lower arm out and I'll space it with something that's the right spacing and I'll do it up tight to make sure it clamps up square. It's just sitting there for the moment but yeah. Have these all ready to weld on, grind up the housing, use the piece of 50 RHS to clamp the gap right, tack to the bench, lower arms are following that diagram, and I've uh, set the pinion angle. Um, for getting these lower mounts on, um, you obviously can't set the pinion angle bang on without the top arms, but um, just to get these close, all I did was put a couple of dowels in these holes here, and then leveled those up, which by the look it would be about the factory position um, with those sitting level and the diff just slightly tilted back so 
I'll weld it in that position there and then once it goes back in the car to get the top arms right that's when I'll um, make sure we've got the pinion angle correct he was rich, fucking prick. When I see you, I'ma kick in the door, wave in the four four. Uh -huh. All you heard was Papa, don't uh -huh. hit me no more. Uh -huh. Kick in the door, wave in the four four. All you heard was Papa, don't hit me no more. Kick in the door, wave in the four four. All you heard was Papa, don't hit me no more. Kick in the door, wave in the four four. All you heard was Papa, don't hit me no more. This goes out for those that choose to use disrespectful views on the king of NY. Fuck that, why try? Throw bleach in your eye, now you're brailing it Slash that light shit, I'm scaling it Conscience of your nonsense In 88, so more powder than Johnson and Johnson, choke steel like Bronson Vigilante, you wanna get on son? You need to act I know this will be hard to see but I've set the diff up there With the lower arms and bottom mounts on Um, if you can see in there, nah Um, I've taken the bump stops out and Just replaced them with some RHS to get the Diff sitting level at a point where I want it. Now, <coughs> this would be really nice if I could, if it was good light under here. I don't think a torch would really help either, but these top arms, um, because of the angle they're on and um, sort of the importance they play in keeping the diff um, where, it, where it needs to be, because it's sort of it's the top arms and the panard rod essentially, um, I want to set them set them up on the diff when the diff's at ride height um, I think when the, the old diff that was in it once it was lowered so, well, as much as it was um, all the arms were sort of binding up and fighting each other so I want to set it up at ride height with all the arms moving freely so I really need to tack some brackets on up in there <coughs> and <coughs> so I'm just going to make a bracket like that just a nice simple one that's just going to be one side of the top arm bracket because it's the only bit I can get to with it in the car so I'll make that up <coughs> and tack that in place and then I can pull the diff out and do the other side I've uh, just temporarily put an axle in and put the wheel back on just to sort of see what I'm like for <coughs> for guard clearance and what it looks like what not so yeah I'll um, make sure the diff's sitting in the right position in the car um, Make sure it's not sticking out to the left or to the right. Make sure the pinion angle's right, and then I'll um, yeah, then I'll make these brackets and slip it in there and tack it on, and then I can pull the diff back out and do the other side and weld them up. My precious son, these words are for you. Listen carefully, and you'll know what to do. Now I've got the diff sitting where I want it to. I'm about to tack the uh, the top arm mounts on. I measured it to get it sitting in the centre of the car. Uh, measured off, measured off sort of locating holes that are under there to each flange. So that's all. I'm happy with that. And then I had to, had to get the pinion angle right. So what I did for that came to the came to the front of the motor. And uh, took a took an angle off the front pulley or off the front of the block there, which gave me how far the motor's tilting back. And then I brought that level, that angle finder, and I stuck it on the on the front of the diff casing there, and got the diff sitting pointing upwards at the same angle that the motor points up. Um, the reason you need to get those angles right is the drive shaft universals. For the phasing of them, need the two angles to be to be opposing. I suppose they are, or, or yeah. So, or the, if the back of the motor is hanging down, then the front of the diff needs to point up. Um, so I set that to where it needed to, to the exact angle as the motor, and had a look at things and decided I was going to point the diff a little bit further down, um, which gives me room that if I want to get the angles the same. I can make those top arms adjustable and lengthen them out a little bit. I thought if I went the opposite way and had it correct, the right angle, but I wanted a bit less, I'd need to shorten the top arms, which as they are, they're already short enough. So 
I'd rather make them longer if I have to rather than shorter so that's why I've left the for now I've left the diff um, with a little less nose up than than it would need to match the, the engine's angle so yeah that'll do I'll tack those mounts in now pull it back out and uh, make the other side of the mount diff housings all welded and put it back in the car with all the arms on um, that's pretty much it for the basically for the diff housing except this hole at the back here so that needs to be covered in obviously but because while I'm doing this diff conversion I'm also going to convert it to coil over suspension rather than the separate spring and shock this is where I'm going to mount the coilover from so I've left this blank just for now until I um, sort out what I'm going to do for the coilover so <clears throat> if I show up here that, that hole you can see there that's where the original shot came through came through down and on the, on the other diff obviously it mounted sort of just down there somewhere on that bottom mount so what I'm going to do come around into this rusty and holy ass boot got these second hand coilovers here which are rear S13 coilovers so I'm going to make, I've used the fronts for the front of the car so these are going to go in the back so what I'm going to do is <clears throat> normally the, well, the, the top of the spring mount normally is actually under there and that cross member there but I want to use the user's, well not use the original shock position or mount but use the original position so what I need really is uh, need a piece of reasonably thick wall, well not thick wall but not, I don't want it thin wall um, pipe that'll fit over the top head of that coil over there then hole saw or, or cut with a grinder um, cut a hole here for the pipe to slip down now I don't want to use that hole, well that would be easy if I could but I can't use that hole as the centre for my hole because I need this face here to still be um, the edge so instead of it being there the hole actually needs to be out here somewhere so what I'll do is with a grinder yeah with a grinder or a hole saw I'll cut through there that will allow the pipe to slip down through and then that will also obviously allow the coil over to come up that hole so I can decide on a on a position that I want it make the appropriate mount off the bottom here that will hold that in position got the diff sitting in the position and then I can cap the top with the holes drilled appropriately for that both sides and then do a bit of bracing um, at this stage I'm a bit torn about whether I just brace each one individually or brace the two together with a, with a cross brace or a strut brace um, that would be the best but when I take this car to the track I quite often fold these seats down and chuck it full of parts and tyres so if I put a strap brace here it's gonna it's gonna stop me doing that so 
I'm going to try and avoid doing that, I think. See, I've cut the holes for where the strut towers are going to go. Using this piece of pipe here as the strut towers. It's quite a bit thicker than it probably needs to be, but I couldn't find a bit of pipe that was sort of the right thickness. But hey, thicker, thicker is not going to be an issue really. <clears throat> anyway, so yeah, I've traced around that, cut those. Sort of the technique I used was once I traced out where it wanted to be, I just cut it a bit smaller all around, and then as you saw by putting the pipe, or trying to put the pipe in the hole um, just ground it out till it was a good flush fit and sitting upright there might still be a little bit of trimming to do once I get the coil over in place but for now it's close enough and <clears throat> already all buffed up so the next step is <clears throat> I need to make the coil over mount on the bottom brackets there um, it's going to be straight off those the back of those brackets and there's sort of two ways I can do it. One way is a single shear and the other is double shear. What that means basically is if it was single shear it would just be like a peg or a bolt hanging off the back um, and that coil over mount to that or double shear. It's kind of essentially what, what the lower arm is mounted like with, with a plate either side. Um, means the peg or the bolt that the coil over is on is um, supported at both ends where a single shear is supported at one end. So. Um, I think I'll go with a double shear, I sort of like that a bit better. Um, I've actually got to have it <clears throat> slightly further back than I was hoping for, but just to get it to line up with the hole, the coilover needs to be about <clears throat> 20 or 30 mil back from the back of that bracket, but it's a good to make it nice and strong and build it up. Once I've done those, I can um, yeah, probably pull the diff pick out, weld them on, and then once the coilover is bolted in, I can... <clears throat> come back in and cut the struts towers to length make a top hat and weld it up get it all sitting right and weld them in and then do a bit of bracing got a few ideas but once I get there I'll see what I decide on doing and then one day I need to tidy up this cross the ears hey does a job <laughs> plates cut out to make these coil over mounts so this plate at the front here is going to weld to the lower arm brackets I spun up these aluminium spacers just to space the coil over backwards a little bit 
with a through bolt obviously and then weld that plate on there weld another one on the other side um, this will get trimmed a little bit to suit the light control arm mounts and then uh, weld it on the back and then that bolt there I'll use that to, to hold it the right with the part and then that bolt will just slip in and out or well, not that one but the one that's right <clears throat> will just slip in and out to remove the coilover so like I said before about single shear and double shear that's a double shear mount to two points of um, of well two points with a of shear um, for the bolt to go through if it was just to have <clears throat> just one and say the bolt was welded in and then there's just a nut on the end of it that will just be single shear as there's only one point one point of um, for the mount for the mount to go through so I've got these mounts ready to, to tack on I just Simply gonna weld on the back there. I'll just tack them into place for now and then pull the diff back out later and weld them up fully. But for now, they can just be tacked on and that'll let me finish the, um, the, the body mount up there. I've made a couple of these plates here I'm sure I don't need to, don't need to show you every cut and, <laughs> and hole that I drill but anyway they fit on top of the coil over so I'm going to weld that to the top of that tube there and once that's done slip it over the coil over um, mark around the tube where the body is there so I can trim it away so there's not a whole lot of excess do that both sides and then we can take it in place. I've just made up these little braces that I'm going to weld in here. Just sort of try and share a bit of the load and tie the strut towers into the body a bit more. I probably should tie the towers together, but like I said before, I kind of I want to leave this open really, just so I can put things in the back here. So I'll do that, and see how it goes. If it looks like it needs some more bracing, I might just make a removable strut bar to go between there. So I'm just going to <clears throat> pull those back out and buff the area and then weld them in. Tail's all done. Pretty happy with how it turned out. Should look good with a with a bit of paint. Um, I'm just gonna quickly paint them for now. Um, at some stage, I'm gonna probably strip this car and give it a good going over, so all this will get painted and all the holes. Well, there's some holes hacked in it, so all those filled up and whatnot. But for now, I'll just give those a quick spray can, and they'll do till we get round to it. So 
one last thing to do for the diff housing. I just made up these little plates here um, just as a bump stop sort of perch really. So if I can show you. These will just slip on the top of the diff housing there. Um, it's kind of hard to see but I'll just slip there and then that's what the bump stop will, will rest on. Time to get the diff head ready to stick it into the housing. This is the diff head out of the F-Series. Over there. So I've pulled the diff head and crown wheel out because I'm going to be replacing it with this Alteza Torsen LSD. That's the factory LSD that come in, in an Alteza. Um, the, the, it's probably a bit hard for me to explain but a Torsen LSD um, is differs to sort of normal clutch style LSDs. Inside there is an array of uh, gears and worm drives. Um, if you really want to know how they work, probably Google it. It's probably a bit better than me explaining it. Um, and that there's the factory diff head. So they're both 4.1 ratio. Um, I probably could just dump that LSD head in there with the crown wheel on it. Um, but I'm actually going to switch the, switch the crown wheels, mainly just for the fact that the crown wheel off the original diff and the pinion are a matching pair so um, just in case there's any weird wearing going on I'll just put the same crown wheel back in it just to be just be, be safe I suppose. Um, <clears throat> I had a bit of a quick look and it looks like that Alteza diff is going to fit in without modification really. Um, the bearings are actually a different size but the outer diameter of the shells is the same so <clears throat> The shells fit in there perfectly fine. Um, they're slightly wider apart, but because this diff head uses these adjustable collars um, and there's plenty of thread there, it'll be no drama to stick it in and get it up adjusted properly. So just giving everything a bit of a clean up. Um, <clears throat> get it get it in there, get it adjusted, then I can put it back into the into the diff housing and give it a little bit of a paint up so I can stick it back in the car and then wait for wait for that wait for the axles to be done. I put the diff head back in it, got the LSD in the in the diff casing, bolt it all back together. Now I'm just gonna prep it to spray some paint on it. Um, I'll pull the pull the arms out as well at the same time, give those a quick spray. And uh, yeah, we put it back in the car once it's painted and wait for the axles to turn back up. I sent those away to be shortened earlier in the week, so once they turn up, it's all go. all painted and back in the car one of the next little jobs to do is the drive shaft and surprisingly on this diff swap the drive shaft is actually going to be the easiest part because uh, previous project I did on the car was to put a J160 six speed Alteza gearbox in it um, I ended up putting the two piece Alteza drive shaft in the car as well which is well this is the these are the back halves and that's a, a chopped front half um, that's the that's the shaft that was in the car, and I just modified the back of it to suit the E series. So I happened to have this other drive shaft lying around. That was that's an Alteza drive shaft, and the back of that obviously fits the diff that we've got in there. So all I've got to do is change these back halves over, and it bolts straight in. So <laughs> what normally is a bit of a mission is a piece of cake. So I'm stoked. We've got the axles back from the engineer that shortened and re them 
So, uh, yeah, 110 mil shorter each axle. So now I just need to change the stud pattern to the 4x114 that the startup needs to be. It's a job I wish I could have done myself. Um, I don't have the gear to do re-splining, which is a shame. I actually, I probably don't have the skill. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was a tie-up between getting them re-splined or I was going to do what a lot of Speedway guys do, well, so I hear they do, um, cut and weld them. Um, I was kind of leaning towards it, but <clears throat> um, I thought I'll just go with re-splining. It's tried and true, so um, I don't really want to have to be fixing this stuff up later, so yeah, it's done now. All good. Now that I've removed the studs, I've got to mark it out to re-drill it. Um, if you watch my 626 builds, um, I've actually done this exact process and to these same axles, it's the same diff, so um, I'll try and make it a bit briefer. But anyway, so what I'm going to do is re-drill it to 4 stud, that's 5, and it's the same PCD that I need, 4x114. So um, I, what it means is I can use one of the stud holes, but I need to drill the other three. But because these axles have those three other holes you can see there, I need to weld, weld one of them up because um, there's not an orientation where um, one of those holes isn't, isn't in the way. So, so what I'm going to do is weld up one of the holes, um, I'll face, face it off in the lathe, mark it, scribe it out, and then using dividers I'll mark out the, the, four, um, the four stud pattern. And then I'll take the axles out to my workshop trailer, which has got a drill press that I can drill them in and drill the holes, <coughs> drill them for the studs that being big in. So I've welded that hole up there. <coughs> Little trick that I shared in the 626 diff episode um use this piece of brass and i clamped it up under the hole and uh what that means is when you weld it up the molten steel doesn't fall through and it doesn't stick to that piece of brass either so if you get yourself a chunk of brass it's real good for that sort of thing or even if you're welding up rust holes and panels and whatnot so yeah handy as um the downside about welding a hole up in an axle like this is it'll tend to actually warp it a little bit so um I'm gonna grind off the excess and then I'll put it in the mill on the, the mill in the lathe and give it a face off. It'll, you'll probably see that it all machine sort of that section there um, first before it'll machine the whole thing just because it's tend to have walked where it's welded. But um, I don't really think there's a way around that to be honest. Um, and it has to be done. So yeah, it is what it is. Machine that flat and. Scribe the PCD on the lathe Like I said you can see where it's um, Faced off first which is where the weld is um, But yeah, it's it's true enough to be all right. So now I'm going to take my dividers and mark out the four stud um, Center punch them and then go drill them Now I've got to drill the drums to the same stud pattern obviously. Now the difference between drilling the drum and drilling an axle is um, you can actually be a little bit out on a drum, it's not too much of an issue. The reason being is those holes are actually oversized to fit over the studs um, and it's located essentially by the center bore so if you get the hole slightly off um, or slightly the wrong size it's actually not really going to affect it at all. So anyway, got to drill them and same process I did when I did the 626 drums, um, I'm actually going to take one of the drums off that car and what I'll do is, because I've already drilled this one to suit, I'll stick it over top, um, I will bolt one of the four holes um, with a stud and bolt to locate it and then the other four I'll just simply drill through the simply drill through the, the pattern that I've got already and then drill through the drum, I'll do it to both and I'll bolt it up, I'll make sure the centres are 
concentric and then um, be away. Right, the last pieces to the diff swap are all ready to go. Shortened and redrilled axles, redrilled brake drums and cleaned up the backing plates and brake parts. Um, the only thing I haven't checked so far is, um, well I can't actually, oh, sorry I have looked at it, um, but these handbrake cables I'm pretty sure aren't going to work so um, I actually need the car for next, next weekend, I've got a drift day to go to so I might just remove them for now and then come back to trying to get something to work. Um, once it's up there I'll have a quick look and see if there's something I can do. I might be able to take the handbrake cables off the old diff, we'll see. But if I have to, I mean, I'll just take them out for now and then I'll come back to it. But yeah, so I'm going to chuck these in and... Um, oh, actually, sorry, one last thing I've got to do is... Uh, the hard line for the diff. I haven't done that yet. So I'll pop that on and just shorten each end by the 110mm and be good to go. Diff's finally all in. Just got to put some diff all in it and bleed the brakes. Um, I haven't done the handbrake cables like I said. I've just tied them up for now. Um, they don't fit so I have to do something there. thought I'd just show you how close. Might be even hard to show it. The clearance between the rim and the lower arm brackets. It's only a few mil really to be honest. Um, so I've narrowed the diff as much as I possibly could. And see here, the, you know, the wheels don't aren't in the guards, so <clears throat> they're a eight and a quarter wide. Those wheels. So um, after, well, when I get round to it after this drift day or after a couple more drift days, um, I'm gonna actually start maybe doing a bit of panel work on this. I'm gonna cut these guards off and make something a bit more suited to cover the tire and just tidy all this bodywork up. It's been debumped at some stage of its life. It's pretty nasty looking in there. Heaps of jibog all chipped out of it so I think I said earlier there's not much rust in the car but it's pretty hammered. But um, I think it's worth fixing for how rust free the car is so yeah. Got the brakes all bleed and then you might be wondering why the welder and grinder are back out. <laughs> I just <clears throat> come across the most stubborn diff bung I've ever encountered. <laughs> the right socket wouldn't do it, hammer and chisel wouldn't do it, so ended up having to weld a tab to it, which loosened it, but then the tab hit on everything, so I had to get in there with a the grinder. Right by the fuel tank, yeah, good times. Well, I'm happy as. Conversion's all done. Just been for a hoon. I sort of figured I never actually showed you around this car too much. It's pretty filthy and grubby at the moment. It's still doing it from its last drift day and all the dust in the shed. Um, she's a beaten up old KP, but I love it. It's a cool car. Um, running gear's good now, so now it's pretty much moving on to the body. A bit of damage everywhere, but it'll show you anyway. So just a uh, stock small port 4 edge with some throttles that I put on it, individual throttles some cool old Advan wheels some rough old seats pretty knackered interior but um, LT's a J160 6 speed gearbox and then now the F series diff
done. I guess the only thing left to do is take for a for a skid. I've got a drift day coming up on Friday in a few days, so um, I'll take it there, give it a good hammering. Should be should be good. The only thing that used to let it down for, for drifting was the old diff, so um, the new diff should be should be primo. Hope you enjoyed watching that. I know it was long, so cheers for cheers for sticking in and keep and watching the whole thing. Um, yeah, look out for the next video. Not sure what it will be, but <laughs> it's always busy doing something, so there'll be something. Hopefully something cool to show you. Um, quite likely the 626. Need to crack back into that. Um, it's a bit warmer now. It's nice being in the sun, so <laughs> it's it works both ways. It's hard to hard to get in the sheep when it's cold, and it's hard to get in the sheep when it's nice and warm. So yeah, anyway, cheers. Catch up.